Hello and welcome back to another episode of Math with Sewn. Today we're going to figure out how do airplanes fly, all right? So in order for anything to be able to be able to move up into the air, there has to be a difference in forces. So if we draw a free body diagram with this, we would have to have the force going up has to be more than the force going down. So that force down has to be smaller. Or essentially, you could think of it as kind of like a force of buoyancy if we're doing fluids here. So the force has to be more in the upward direction than in the bottom direction. And if we focus on a wing of a plane, which tends to look like this, that would mean that we would need the pressure to be more on the bottom than on the top, okay? Because the pressure is going to be directly related to force. Pressure is equal to force divided by area. So if the pressure is more, then the force will be more, and we need the force to be more. So now we have to ask the question, what would make the pressure more on the bottom of a wing? Well, we need to think in terms of Bernoulli's big equation. If we know Bernoulli's big equation, which is P1 plus rho GH plus 1 half rho V squared, equals P2 plus rho GH plus 1 half rho V2 squared. Now these are essentially the same height, so that doesn't really matter too much. If we want the pressure to be more on the bottom, let's call this the bottom, we would need the pressure to be more. That would mean that the velocity would have to be smaller. Okay, and if it, this is the top of the wing, the pressure would have to be smaller, which means the velocity would have to be greater. All right, so that means that in order for an airplane to fly, the velocity of the air has to be more on the top than it is on the bottom. The velocity here would have to be smaller. And the way that they accomplish this is actually through this curvature of the wing. That curvature of the wing has determined that it actually applies a force centripetal, and that force centripetal, circular motion, is going to apply an increase in tangential velocity, which allows the planes to fly. It's as simple as that, all right? The same thing can happen with tornadoes and things like that, with roofs of a building are susceptible to be flying, uh, to flying off. So if we have a building here, look at that house, perfect definition of that, we would need the pressure on the inside to be greater than the pressure on the outside. Well, when we're talking about roofs, um, it's pretty obvious that the air is moving on the outside, right? And if that air is moving greatly on the outside, that velocity of air is very, very high, which makes the pressure very low, which means that the force holding the roof down is going to be way less than the pressure difference that you're getting inside of your house with the pressure inside your house being very high. That means that the force applied on the top of the roof is extremely high and it actually ends up being more than the overall weight of the roof because technically there's a few forces happening here. We would have the weight of the roof itself. We would have mg going down and then we would have the pressure which would also be going, like the force of pressure would also be going in the downward direction for the free body diagram. But the force of Bernoulli's equation would be so much that the roof just flies straight off that building. All right, that's going to do it for this one. Until next time, everybody, I will see y'all later. Bye.